If you're familiar with Group Managed Service Accounts, then it will come as no surprise that there's an updated version of that realistically within the Azure AD. Uh, this is called Service Principles. So the Service Principles differ from Group Managed Service Accounts in as much as they can be limited in their access all the way down to the actual application. So let's have a quick look at that. Now, I've already logged into my Azure subscription, and it is a free subscription, so you should be able to reproduce all of these steps yourself. So first off, we're going to show you the creation. Now, I'm going to give my um, service principal access to my newly created uh, resource group. Now, I could just take the resource group ID from here, but realistically, we're going to pretend that the resource group already exists. So we're going to go ahead and get our subscription ID, our tenant ID, and then we're going to add a service principal as a variable. So now we have a name, we have a tenant ID, and we have a subscription, which is going to come in handy for what we do next. So we're going to create a brand new uh, service principal, and we're going to create a brand new service principal with a contributor access to our subscription, our resource group, based on the subscription ID. So this is just basically going to randomly generate a password for us. Um, the only thing we're really specifying here is the access to which serv um, uh, resource group. So the resource group is already specified and the name of the account itself. So once that's done, that, that will just simply be able to retrieve um, some information that we passed into it. So we're going to take the secret and decrypt the secret, and we're going to look at the application ID. So the application ID is the unique identifier for the actual account. And we can now look at the unencrypted password, which as we can see is also a GUID. Now, if we want to go one step further, we would say this is probably not the most secure method, but we'll get to that. So we can create a new PS credentials, which as you can see, we're going to use a secret. So we don't even going to decrypt the password. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and use the um, application ID, which in this case is the GUID. And we're logging in as now that um, service principal. So we can now manage anything that's under that uh, group managed resource simply because we now have access as we previously granted and we can also check that the IDs that we just logged in as and the ID that we previously created do match proving that we have logged in with that account now a slightly better way and perhaps more secure way is to use certificates so let's look at a certificate based process instead now a certificate based process first of all we're going to need to create a certificate which frankly is no different to what we've done previously but we do need to make one step which is to convert it to a base64 string once we have the base64 string then we can go ahead and basically send this to a zero and basically an encrypted value that will one time be used in order for the setup so we go ahead and we create a new account now I'm going to deliberately do something that will fail which is try to use the role and scope parameters within creation now, the reason this is failing is because it's a two-step process when you use certificates instead of a one-step like we did previously. An example of this is if I go ahead and just create the account, no roles, no permissions, etc. Um, you'll see it succeeds successfully, no problems. So if I now take that information and I go, okay, fine, I'm now going to add the specific permissions we want, which in this case is add it to this resource group on this subscription, you'll see that this will proceed as well, as long as it's not done in a single step. So what we can do from here is now log in with our freshly created account that again has permissions to this group uh, resource or resource group to be more accurate. Um, so nothing special here in terms of process just keep in mind that it's a two-step process instead of a one-step process so I can now grab the local certificate from my machine uh, get the thumbprint and then connect using just the application ID so as long as you have the application ID and you know which certificates it's related to you can log in which generally is a little bit more secure since passwords are not exchanged um, I would see Overall, I would prefer that people use that, but entirely up to you, I guess. Hope you found it useful, and if you're not, you know what to do.